and welcome to my next tutorial. Today we'll be making pumpkins. And you're probably asking yourself, why would I make a pumpkin if I can just go to the basic shape library and do a search for a pumpkin? And there you have several, including pumpkin pie. But let me choose one. I think I chose this one. And here's the difference. We will be making this one here, whereas this one is the one that comes with Tinkercad, which is not bad, but when you print it, you can see the faces all along the pumpkin, which does not look good. We'll be using a high definition um, sphere to work this one and make it look a little bit better. And you can have the option of what kind of uh, stem you want. So I'm gonna get rid of this just because we're going to be working with a lot of, uh, let's see, bandwidth. So we want to get rid of whatever we can so that uh, it doesn't freeze over. Let's go ahead and get started. This is our model. I'll get rid of it later right now. Let's just keep an eye on that because that's what we're working with. Now, how do you get a high definition sphere? Let's do a search for sphere. Oops, spelled it wrong. I guess my hands are in the wrong place. There you go. Enter. And it says that when you hover over it, there's the regular one. This is the one you see in the basic shape library. And here is a high res. I call it high definition, but it's high res sphere. We're going to bring it in. Here is where you want to change it in the settings of the shape. You maximize this. Now it has the maximum amount of triangles to make your shape. So let's get started. The height is going to be 55 millimeters. This is the width. It's the one going across. I'm going to click on the front right corner and change that to 47. And the depth, meaning for me going backwards, is going to be 54. And let's change this to orange because orange is cool for pumpkins. All right. So to get this done, okay, to, this is actually most of the pumpkin here. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to duplicate this, which is this button here, or I like to do control D there. There's two of them. Now I want to move this 31 uh, millimeters backwards or to the right. So I'm going to change the grid or the snap grid to five. So every time I click my arrow key, I'm going to click five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, and then I'll change it back to one right there and one more. Now I'm going to group the two. I'm going to hit control D or you can choose that button there. I've now duplicated it. I'm going to rotate inside of this blue circle, not outside inside of the blue circle, 90 degrees. Okay. We're almost there. I'm going to hit duplicate again, control D and I'm going to rotate it just 22.5, no 45. And then one more time, control D and I'm going to go, actually it's easier if I just go this direction, 22.5. Nope. 45 again. This is the basic part of our pumpkin. Okay. Now one of the cool things about our pumpkin is not in this one, but you can print a lid so that it'll be solid or hollow inside and you can put stuff in here. That's the cool thing about this pumpkin. So we have, majority of it done. Now this part, I'm going to let you play with it. But for me, the way I did this is I used this cone, changed it to green. So I'm going to move it up here, drag it up. And then, well, before I, I go on, I'm going to, let's move this out of here and we're going to group these. Notice how I click and drag. And now I'm going to hit the group button, control G. Now you see how it's red, it's processing. And when we're dealing with high resolution shapes, it, it requires a lot more power. So it takes a little bit longer to do this. Now pay attention to this part right here. You want it. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and change the shapes here because we want it to make sure that it's actually touching. Don't want a stem that's going to just fall off. I want to maximize the sides because I don't like the way that looks. And the base radius. We're going to make it smaller. It's going to be, let's try five. What does that look like? 
That's not bad. Now, because we've already grouped these around the, the pumpkin, I'm just going to select everything, including the stem. I'm going to click the letter L, which is the align button. It's going to go here, centered, and there, centered. Now I'm going to click away. There, now I can actually see what's going on here. I want this to be touching that. So, oh, I need my black one. There you go. Now, see how there's a black and a blue line here that tells me that's the edge. I don't have a black and a blue line here. This tells me it's actually going inside of the pumpkin. And now I'm going to click on the pumpkin. I'm going to click the letter T so I can look inside. And it's still not where I want it to be. So I'm going to, again, I'm dragging this down so I can see it. Then rotating a little bit so I can see better. And I actually wanted to cover that part right there. Okay. Now the cool thing about the stem and the cone is that I can I can change this part right here to maybe that height. The top radius, I can manipulate that. Now, I don't want it to be as big as the bottom. I want it to be slightly smaller. My base is five. Now, whatever base you choose, you just want the base or the top radius to be just a little bit smaller. Let's just go with four here. And don't forget, I changed this to 10 millimeters. Again, your numbers can change. Now, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to duplicate control D, move it up a little bit. Now, this isn't going to be perfect and you can change it to however you want. I'm going to shrink this. I'm going to hit the shift button and then drag this down, shift and drag down. And then I'm going to rotate it just a little bit. I'm going to go outside of the blue circle so I can just change it a little. And then this is what I'm trying to get rid of this edge. So to do that, I'm going to move it a little bit. Oh, I moved it with the arrow key one time. There it is. And it moved a lot. So I'm going to change this to 0.1 for right now. And then it's not bad, but I'm going to move it up a little bit over up a little bit. And then I'm going to drag it down. This is going to distort the stem a little bit and I'm okay with that. Whoa, that was too much. I'm going to do just a little bit more. Now, if you like your stamp to look just straight up and you, you like the way it looked before, that is perfectly fine. <clears throat> so that was fine. I'm going to just duplicate control D and automatically, because I never stop um, selecting this one. When I hit control D, Tinkercad will memorize what you did and then try to understand what the next part is and then give you that next part. For me, this is fine. I'm going to move it over just a little bit. I don't want the edge to show too much. Okay, I'm going to be fine with that. Now, if you want to make it perfect, better, your choice. We're going to move on. I'm going to click the letter T so I can see what this looks like. We essentially have finished a pumpkin and it's high resolution, so that's cool. But we don't want just a regular pumpkin. I'm going to group all this. So I'm going to select and drag across control G or that button right there. Ooh. Now I want the colors to go back because I like the way it looks. So I'm going to click multicolor and it's going to keep its original colors. Okay. Now this is how you make it um, hollow inside. But first thing, let's make a lid. Now the lid, I'm going to start with a sphere. Now this one is the regular sphere. I'm going to make it a hole. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to align it with this first one here. I'm going to drag it up. <clears throat> now this number doesn't really matter the height. What you want is for the, the top of the sphere to be taller than the pumpkin. The sides, you want them to be, let me, let me explain exactly what I'm talking about here. Where this sphere goes into this pumpkin, you want it to be at that edge right there. And this side, you want it to be at that edge. So whatever it is, whatever number it is for you, you go for it. See how it's touching that side now? Now I'm going to try to touch this side. Okay. So there's that. And then I'll drag it a little bit more over here. Now I don't want the lid to be this far away. You see the, I don't want the lid to go all the way around like that. So I'm going to just drag the center one right there, this way, right there. <clears throat> now what I'm doing is in my head thinking, okay, am I okay going about 
here all the way around. And I am. I could technically go here, but it'll be if you if you move it closer to the stem, you're gonna have a smaller hole here and you can put less things. So if you choose a wider opening, you can put candy, money, and whatever. It did open it on the side, so I'm just gonna close it over a little bit so that it's just touching there and just touching there. Okay, so we're gonna do pretty much the same process we did before where I'm gonna duplicate this, control D, and then I'm gonna hit the shift and the arrow key to move it pretty quickly across. Shift and the arrow key, wow, that's pretty scary over here. And I did not count, I'm just gonna look, because the imperfection between these two actually give it character. So we're gonna leave the imperfection of not being equally distributed there, no problem. Now, this one is currently selected. I'm gonna hit the shift button and hold it down. Now both of them are selected. I'm gonna hit control D to duplicate and look what it did. It anticipated that this is what I wanted. I don't. So let's do this again. I, I'm gonna hold down the shift and click and I'm still holding down the shift. I'm clicking this. I'm gonna control D and 45. And then at this point, I'm gonna say control D and it should give me the rest of them, okay? This right here is a pretty wide opening that will allow you to pretty much uh, put most things inside of this pumpkin. But here's the deal. Before we go on, very important part. Now at this point, I'm gonna get rid of this over here. At this point, I wanna duplicate this pumpkin. So I'm gonna hit Control D. With my shift, this, this part right here is very important. You wanna move it, but you wanna move it um, with the arrow keys. I know that's that red part over there is just mind boggling. Okay, there, that part's done. Now I want you to notice something before I group any of this, actually I wanna show you something that's pretty cool. I'm gonna group this, okay, just the way it is. That's not the way it's, it should be done, but I'm gonna group it anyways. Control G, check out the shape it makes at the bottom. I think it's amazing. Cool, like an apple core might do that later okay so I'm going to get rid of this bottom part and I'm just gonna make sure it covers everything I'm gonna drag it up now this part right here is very important so let's let's look at this you want to move it up so that it touches that corner this corner right there but at the same time you want to make sure that the stem is still there when you print it. So let's, we got to find a, a I'm going to go right here first. Okay. Now let's look inside. Do we still have this? Yes, we do. I'm going to click on the letter T so I can see inside of here. It gives me a little bit of coverage and you know what? I'm okay with that. You, what you don't want is for this box to make a hole in here. If you do that, it's not going to look very good and it'll probably break. So, I didn't give you any numbers there. I gave you an idea. Go to the very edge. In fact, I can go down a little bit here. Just a little bit. If you leave any space here hanging, it's gonna fail when it prints. It, it's just going to, so you don't want that. So I'm gonna group this now. Control G. Okay, so this, I'm going to duplicate Control D, and now I'm going to do the same thing, Shift and Arrow. I'm going to try to line it up over here. Actually, you know what? Let's move this pumpkin over here. I'm going to Shift and move this. Before um, they get over each other, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this part and make it into a hole. What I'm going to try to do is get rid of part of this here. So I'm um, going to move the pumpkin. Not by, not with my arrows, but with the uh, uh, shift button and the arrows. <clears throat> it may not look this good when you're doing it. Trust me, I've done this several times and sometimes it looks like this. Sometimes it looks like that. Just try your best and, and if it doesn't work out, then just get some more and drag them in here. So I'm going to group them and there's a good chance that this is not going to work perfectly. But here you go. I select and drag or click and drag, and I'm gonna group, control G. <clears throat> now there's gonna be some artifacts here. I can guarantee there's gonna be some artifacts. Oh look, yeah, a little bit. 
that was left. And I'm fine with that because I can just get rid of that. I'm going to drag this, move it up, move it over. And I think we're good there. So again, I'm going to hit shift and oh, it's already selected both of them. Control G or command G, depending on what kind of computer you're using. There, we have most of it. We have two more things to do. We need to make the hole inside and then we need to make the base. If you try to print it like this without the base, it's going to fail. So I'm gonna bring in um, a cylinder. I want the segments to be as smooth as possible. Actually, let's move the sides over. There you go. And let's see, 20, no, let's make it 30. Enter, 30, enter. Now, I could just try to drag it and find the center, but I'm too lazy. I'm gonna click and drag to select everything. Click the letter L, center, centered. Do I like it? No, I want it a little bit bigger. So let's make it 40. That did not work, 40. And I'm gonna do the same thing. Click, drag to select everything. Click the letter L, center. Center. All right, that is much better. The chances of it failing are are much lower. Now, I'm going to click the letter T so I can see inside. T after I, I don't want that in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click there and then drag this down. Uh, let's say let's start with one mil and uh, let's go 1.5. Okay, that should be enough. What we don't want is this thing to fall over when it's printing, and this is what's going to prevent it from doing that. Uh, does it need that? Uh, it doesn't really. Okay, so we're almost done. Let's go back to, no, let's just leave it like this. Let's bring in a sphere, a regular sphere. We're going to make it hollow. Now, I'm going to hit the shift button. I'm going to hold it down, and I'm going to bring this up to make a perfect sphere. Right here, let's make it 54. Let's bring it inside. Now it's not going to fit perfectly. We're going to, we're going to have to adjust this. Okay, not bad. I don't want this touching the ground, so I'm going to move it up one millimeter. So let me just change the snap grid to one. I'm going to move this up one. That is not bad. Okay, so I'm going to center this by clicking, dragging, clicking and dragging, clicking the letter L, centered and centered. Okay, so a couple of things. This one, I wanted, let me uh, show you by putting the color back in. Nope, let's make that a hole. I'm going to click on the pumpkin, the letter T, and I want this hole to be exposed. Right now, only that part would be exposed. So I'm going to bring this up a little bit. Oops, not the pumpkin. I want the, the little sphere inside of it to be moved up. Now, you see how it's getting rid of some of the, the edge of that? I'm perfectly fine with that. Okay, so look, you can see, right? When it closes, it will still close like it's complete. And that's what I'm looking for. Now I'm going to click the letter T after I click on the outside. So here we go. I'm going to select everything. And let's make that regular solid color. I'm going to click and drag. I'm going to group. And again, because it's high resolution, it takes longer. I'm going to click here, the letter T. And now when you print it, it'll print um, like this, right? With no problem. But here, here's my recommendation. When you print this, I would print this separately from the top part. Because this will most likely print, if you keep it the same dimensions, it'll probably print within either 40 minutes or 120 minutes or like an hour, and a little bit over an hour. 40 minutes to an hour for this. And if you print this separately, it'll probably take around 40 minutes just because of the color changes that happen right around here. However, the cool thing is it'll save you a lot of time because if you print them both at the same time, it'll take about three or four hours. Trust me, I've printed this a few times already. So it saves you a couple of hours if you just print this by itself and then print this by itself. Trust me. Um, I hope you like the videos and uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Have a good day.